challenge that we had is how to integrate the SPOC that we created into the existing course. So we used a flipped classroom approach. So the idea you can see here on the typical week, the idea is that from Friday to uh, Sunday, the students are asked to go uh, on the edX platform and to <coughs> follow the SPOC. So they are watching the videos, doing some uh, quizzes, some exercises, and they have as a support a discussion forum. They can send an email to the MOOC assistant, which is managing um, that part of the week. So, and that part of the week is what will be then uh, on the MOOC. After that, we are going to uh, two next part of the weeks, which are for our own side students labs and practical sessions. So the students have classical uh, exercises um, on site in the auditorium. And it's also the, the, the good time for us to get and grasp feedback from the students um, about MOOC, the videos that they saw, the exercises that they uh, made. Because the idea, as I already said, is to have a test before the launch of the MOOC. So it's interesting, it's a good time to have this feedback directly from the students. Uh, and then the last part of the week, of course, is a lecture given by the professor. And during that lecture, the professor is restructuring the stuff uh, that the student saw in the videos. Uh, and another particularity is that, uh, because it's a second um, bachelor level course, which is given normally in French, and because the spoke or the videos are in English, we also use that lecture with the, the professor to uh, clarify some emotions that were not uh, clear for the students. So that's the typical big classical free uh, classroom approach. Looking a little closer at the integration of online and face-to-face -face activities, because this is very important for us on the physics course side, people or students had the theory online, so they watch the videos online, do the quizzes there, and they brought their questions into class. So basically, they, they came with their questions. Um, they also sometimes they put the, the questions online too, so the teacher could look at them in advance. And then the face-to-face -face, um, teaching was more question-driven, was more like discussions. Whereas in, in, in the economy course, the theory was also there within the videos, and then they had their more applications, exercises, online exercises in there. When they came to the face-to-face -face side, they really wanted to deepen the things that students learned online. So they had more an, an interactive consolidation phase. They had little group work going on, discussions. They had other more um, complicated exercises that they worked on. So it was more a deepening uh, phase there. Also, feedback from students. We did survey for all of the courses, and we we'll, uh, keep on doing that. And I think this is, these are the most uh, the, the, the important things that came out. I think that video <coughs> is something that is, uh, we can see that is very important in, uh, concerning MOOCs. But I think students, for our students, really value scripts too. So I think we have to think a little bit more about media and um, where, where do we have to put video, where do we have to put more text-based material. So that's something to, that we have to look at. Also short video clips, we heard that before, right? We have more like 10 minute clips, but I, I would go more on the shorter side too. So our students really like the short clips, so I say five to seven minutes. Also they want to have a little more application um, concerning the exercises that um, they had to do online more numeric examples, more really ex um, application. And also, they really liked to have um, an activity after watching an instructional video, really. And I think it's uh, more or less bad to have just a few lectures, clips aligned, and then people having look, look to look them through, and then there's nothing that they really can work on. So to have self-test after each video clip is a good thing. And also, this is, uh, was really criticized that the group, group work, so the basic idea that you can have more interaction in the face-to-face -face part, 
Um, the group work was quite unpopular. So we're thinking about that. So I'm guessing in this part that we really have to look at, uh, um, at uh, what, what, what kind of activities are used in the face-to-face -face time and then compared to the exam, what really helps the students to do a good exam. So the constructive alignment should be uh, really thought through there. It's clear now that with digital education you can either extend the reach of education, so instead of 100, you have 100,000 students, or increase the quality, and this is basically the SPOX. So we are moving now from MOOCs to SPOX, SMOC, SPOX, a small private online courses, which is using basically the same technology, videos, quizzes, the power of big data, learning analytics to know what is going on, and gamification tools in order to improve learning on your face-to-face -face on your all campus courses. So the concrete experience was what we call the zero courses. These are remedial courses for freshmen to review STEM content, mathematics, physics, chemistry. When the students come to the university, although they are theoretically know everything they should know in order to take advantage of the lectures, in practice is that the background is different, they have forgotten things, and so at all Spanish universities, basically, and I think also at other universities in other countries, they have these courses just to refresh these uh, contents they already should know. But the topic was not well solved because there's a lot of content to cover and there's very little time because it's just one week or two weeks before the real first semester classes start. So what we did is an experiment which started August 2012, what we called the Genghis Project. The Genghis because we used the Khan Academy platform, which was open source until September 2012. So this was another Khan, the Genghis Khan. Mm. And uh, the idea was to provide additional content for the students to review during, during the summer, videos, exercises, before the face-to-face -face, uh, classes took place. So we added this additional uh, content to the existing face-to-face -face classroom. It's a kind of flipping the classroom, but rather it's complementing the face-to-face -face, uh, classes with this uh, uh, Khan-based uh, content. So what did we do? On the one hand, we took the Khan Academy, open source. We took, it, uh, we took the Moodle, which is the internal uh, LMS we use at the in university. We provided uh, a link in order to have authentication and, and directly uh, for the students didn't have to sign in into two different systems but into just one. We took the first year only the physics professors and in the first semester, in, in the beginning of 2012, they did their own videos in Spanish with the material they wanted to provide and they also did uh, prepared exercises. And then during the month of August, we had the students accessing this information getting gamification badges provided by the Khan Academy, and they want the social tools also to interact, to help themselves. The faculty was not really there. There was a kind of a looking what is, was going on, but were not really intervening, because the real intervention was then online. But, but this, the professors could see, with the wonderful learning analytics tools the Khan Academy has, what was going on. Where were the students? Where were they having problems, etc. This is reality. So the student theoretically comes with everything he or she needs to know to take advantage of the studies. But in reality, this is not so. So the reality is a bit more broken. No? They don't know everything. Maybe they don't understand well a subject, and then this means that the following subjects are not so well understood. Maybe there are some holes because of electives, etc. So the reality looks a bit different. Students don't finish exactly in four years with maximum marks. And what we think is that these kinds of technologies, Spox, can help in uh, eliminating these inefficiencies to complement what they need to know before they come to university, to fill in some spaces there and to improve the overall experience at the university and to have better results. Mm -hmm.